Hey guys, Mr. Donnelly here again, your favorite and only chemistry teacher, here today to talk about naming binary ionic compounds. So let's get that on the board. So we're going to be naming binary ionic compounds today. So binary ionic compounds. So you recall that an ionic compound is composed of a metal and a nonmetal. So both a metal and the nonmetal have special names. Names that'll be different from one another. Because remember, you're identifying both a one type of element and another type of element. So let's take a look at what composes an ionic compound. So here we go. So if you recall, ionic compounds are metal. Ionic compounds are those metals with the nonmetals. And of course, if you're making an ionic compound, it's going to be made of the two different elements, and each element, um, each element is going to have a different name. But the metal itself, the metal is a cation and positive. Nonmetal is a anion and negatively charged. So here you're dealing with both a cation and an anion. So when we talk about cations, cations and anions, we're talking about the ion itself. So remember that these, these atoms have lost or gained the number of valence electrons that are necessary to make it either that cation or that anion. All right, so let's take a look at how to name the metal ion first or the cation first. So I'm gonna erase this on the board here. So naming Cations, i.e., in other words, the metal. Real simple here to name the cation. Cations keep their name. So when we're naming the cation or the metal, we don't have to do anything. We just keep the name exactly the same. So, for instance, so naming cations, i.e., the metal, don't change the name. Example, Na as the cation is Na plus, recall sodium loses one valence electron, so it becomes positively charged, and we're just going to call it or name it Sodium. Nothing changed. Another example. Barium. Barium is a metal. It's going to become a cation when it loses its electrons, or just a regular old ion. And when that happens, it gets a two plus charge. Remember, it's going to lose two valence electrons. This is group two. So the cation. Name it. Guess what? Pretty easy. Barium. So, takeaway here for the cations is that all you have to do is rewrite the name that's given on the periodic table. Barium is barium is a cation. Um, lithium, the atom lithium is lithium as a cation, et cetera, et cetera. Don't change the name. Keep it the same. Makes things easy. All right, so let's take a look at the anions. Anions are a little bit more difficult. And the reason why the anion is a bit more difficult is because we have to change the ending of the name. We have to change the ending of the name. So 
naming anions or IE and non metals. Naming the non metals. Recall that an anion is going to become an ion because it gains electrons and gets a negative charge. So we're going to start off uh, looking at a couple different ones. Um, chlorine, fluorine, oxygen, sulfur, phosphorus, some of the um, more difficult ones we'll get into in a little bit. But naming anions, i.e. the nonmetals. So here we go. Let's take a look at one. The easiest way to show these is probably through an example. So um, here we go. So an example. If I have chlorine, so chlorine, Cl, as an anion, It is Cl, one minus, it gains one electron. So now we're going to name the anion. What we do is, is we take chlorine and we're going to drop the ending right here, the I N E, and change it to I. So chlorine is an anion, it's going to be Cl, one minus. We write down the name chlorine, then we're going to drop the ending. Drop ending and change and change it to I D E. So chlorine has now become chloride. So it's chloride. So naming anions, i.e. the nonmetals. The example here was chlorine. Chlorine is an anion, the Cl1 minus. Chlorine, when you're naming that chlorine anion, you drop the ending and change it to I. See? I-N-E to I-D. Chlorine becomes chloride as an anion. Let's take a look at another example. So let's take a look at oxygen. Oxygen. So oxygen. As an anion. O2 minus. So O2 minus. So what do we do here? We have to change the ending again to I. So oxygen. Identify that last three letters or so right here. Change to I. Change to I. Drop ending and add I. So ox. I'm oh, sorry. For this one, I made a mistake. It's not O X Y G N that we have. Y G E N that we're dropping. So it becomes ox I. Let's take a look at another one. Alright? So we drop the ending here. So we go through again. Oxygen as an anion is O2 minus. Recall it's in group 16, so it gains two valence electrons. Oxygen, we identify the ending for oxygen. We drop it and change it to I. We get oxide, O2 minus. Okay? So let's take a look at another one. Let's see, uh, let's do phosphorus. So we're going to speed up here a little bit, phosphorus. This is a tricky one for people because phosphorus, you can't really, it's hard, difficult to figure out where we're eliminating the ending. So here, you just have to remember that we're going to eliminate the O-R-O-U-S, O-U-S, change to I. So you get phosphorus. Phosphide. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is another one. So nitrogen is another tricky one. Nitrogen. As an anion. A little bit different. O-G-E-N disappears. What do we get? Drop the ending. Change it to ide. Now you try. One more. One more people have to trouble to have trouble with. And that is. Selenium. Maybe you figured this one out already. I'm not sure. Ending. Drops. Add I. Selenide. So that's how you do the monoatomic ions for both uh, the cation and the anion.
So let's take a look at how to use these cations and anions and combine them together to um, write names. All right? So given a formula, you're given a chemical formula, and from that chemical formula, we're going to start writing names. Right? So we can take a look and go ahead and name the chemical formulas. So naming chemical formulas. naming ionic compounds or naming ionic chemical formulas, we're talking about the same thing here. So let's start off with, uh, I don't know, let's go with lithium. Let's go with Li, 3, and N. Now, we know from previous work in chemistry class or from maybe from your biology classes that lithium, there's three lithium. One nitrogen, three lithiums, and one nitrogen. We don't have to worry about the subscript from the naming ionic compounds here yet. So what we just have to do is, is we just have to name the cation and the anion. So here we go. Remember that first identify the metal. First identify the metal. There's the metal right there. That makes nitrogen a non-metal. Now let's name them individually. So lithium we call as a metal. Don't do anything to the name makes it really easy. So it's just lithium. Nitrogen, on the other hand, is the anion, right? It's the anion. So what we have to do is we have to look at nitrogen and change the name by changing the N name. Recall a little while ago in your notes, a few minutes ago in your notes, we showed how to do that. So N-G-E-N -E is dropped and changed to I. Lithium nitride. So we're going to rewrite the answer. Lithium nitride. And you get your answer. Bing, bang, boom. Pretty straightforward. Let's do another one. This time, the chemical formula we're going to use will be Ca, Ca, F2. CaF2. So we have calcium and we have fluorine. Maybe you've already done this in your head. Maybe you figured out in your head already that what we're going to do here is first write down the name of the metal. And we'll do that by just drawing a line between the two so I know which is a metal, which is a non-metal. Calcium is a metal. The non-metal is fluorine. Find the ending that I need to drop. I N E. Change it to I. Rewrite the name. Calcium, fluoride, done. Bing, bang, boom, done. Pretty easy. One more, one more, and then we're going to take a look at how to actually take those, take those names and change them into formulas. A little trickier, a little bit trickier than just naming them by themselves. Last one. Let's do Mg, Mg, oh. Br2, right? Again, first thing, find the metal. Second thing, find the non-metal. Name the metal as is. Magnesium. Look at the non-metal. We write its name down if you need to. Magnesium bromine. Not done. Remove the ending. Add the IDE. Magnesium. Bromide. One, two, three. Done and easy. Magnesium. Magnesium. This is supposed to be an N here. Magnesium bromide. Okay? So let's take a look at how to name, I'm sorry, how to write formulas from names. Writing formulas from names is a little bit trickier. So let's write some formulas from names. Right? Writing. Formulas from names. All right. So, writing formulas from names is a little bit trickier than writing names. Sorry, uh, than writing formulas from names. So, writing formulas from names. Let's start off. 
Let's do the first one, the one we're familiar with. We have magnesium. We just did this a second ago, right? Magnesium bromide. The easiest way to do these is actually to do something called a crisscross. It's a shortcut, but I'm not going to show you the shortcut yet. I'm going to show you the long way so you really understand how to do this. So with magnesium bromide, well, let's do the crisscross first. It might be easier. And then work into the harder stuff later. Magnesium bromide. Magnesium, Mg. Okay. Go to your periodic tables. On your periodic table, recall the magnesium is in group two, so it's going to have a two plus charge. Bromine is on the periodic table. It has a one minus charge. Cross method. So from the cation, draw an arrow down to where you can write that number as a subscript. Group two. Notice there's no number here, so we're not carrying anything down here. Nothing gets carried down here because there's no number. There's just a negative sign. Rewrite the formula as Mg Br brought down that subscript two, okay? Now this is a balanced chemical formula. Here's the reason. There's one magnesium with the two plus charge. You're adding, you're adding that magnesium, adding that magnesium to a bromine with that minus one charge, and there's two of them. 2 times minus 1, 2 times minus 1 is negative 2, and that equals 0. So we have a balanced chemical formula here. 2 plus for the magnesium, 1 minus for the bromine, but there's two of them. So you get 2 plus negative 2 equals 0. Let's look at another one. So that was magnesium bromide. Let's take a look at potassium phosphate. To the periodic table. Potassium is in group one. K. Charge? Positive. Positive one. I'm not going to write the number there because it makes the crisscross easier. Phosphorus, group 15, or 5A, gains three valence electrons. So it's P3 minus. Put across the charges. Well, I have no number here. Three here. Circle of three. Bring that three down. And rewrite my chemical formula correctly. So now I'm going to have K3. Nothing came down from here because there was no number. P. This is a this is a balanced chemical formula. It's a correct chemical formula. Let's take a look why. I have three potassiums at plus one each. So it's three plus one phosphorus at a negative three. Three plus negative three equals zero. All right. One more and this long video is over with. One more and our long, long video is over with. It's almost 20 minutes of me talking, which is a long time to watch video for. So one more. And we'll do, we're going to do calcium, calcium phosphate. Let's do calcium phosphide. So calcium phosphide. I actually might do one more after this one too. Calcium phosphide. So here I have Ca, calcium, group two, two plus, phosphorus, group 15, three minus. Notice this time that I have numbers above both. It tells me that I'm gonna have to cross both charges. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I put the two down, two with the subscript, only the three, not the negative sign, only the three. Bring it down, write it as a subscript. Rewrite my chemical formula. Calcium, subscript three, P phosphorus, phosphide, two. Balanced chemical formula, yes. Three times two is six, plus two times negative three is negative six. Six plus negative six is zero. Last one, okay, last one, I promise. We're going to do one 
that has equal and opposite charges. So really, I'm not. Let me spell this guy wrong. I always spell the name wrong. Will the um, oxide. Will the oxide. Be root 2, 2 plus charge. Oxygen, oxide. Root 16, minus charge. Notice my subscript, my soup, my superscripts are identical. So I'm going to cross charges like I did. So this comes down as a subscript. This one comes down as a subscript. Rewrite the chemical formula. Be2O2. No, incorrect. It's two to two here. We simplify. Simplify. Two to two is the same as one to one. So it's actually BEO, something I probably have right now. BO, no BEO. Anyway, beryllium, two plus charge, there's one of them. Oxygen, two minus charge, there's one of them. Two plus negative two is zero. So now, guys, we get back to work in class. Mr. Donnelly signing off, and enjoy the rest of your day.